Learn about the latest updates in Azure Data Studio Oracle Migration Extension, how we're making it easier for you to migrate from Oracle to Azure Database for Postgres or Azure SQL, this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm super excited. We're going to be talking about some new things that have landed, especially for folks who are wanting to migrate from Oracle to Azure Database for Postgres or Azure SQL. And to talk with us about it, I'm bringing on the engineering team, uh, some of the engineering members of uh, Ramya and Neil. Ramya and Neil, thanks so much for joining us uh, from the database modernization engineering team to talk to us a little bit more about this. Uh, so let's get right into it. Neil, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what's been added recently or what's been announced recently in this space? Um, thanks, Anna. So in this month during Ignite, we made three major announcements. The first one is uh, support for Azure database for PostgreSQL as target. We found a lot of customers and, and the field asking for a demand, like continuous demand of having Postgres SQL as a target. Uh, back in April, we announced SQL, but now we added Postgres SQL. The second announcement was um, it's not just SQL business critical and general purpose. We know that when you have large workload, the suitable target is SQL hyperscale. So we support SQL hyperscale target as well. And the third and foremost is on the SKU recommendation. So when you're moving from Oracle to any Azure data, right sizing is, is sometimes is a very complex task. And what we have done is a user can go ahead and upload their AWR data, uh, which is uh, Oracle performance reports. And based on that, we go ahead and generate certain recommendation. And we'll go through all this, all these scenarios and we'll go through some demos. So I'll first, I'll hand over to Ramya to demonstrate the Azure Database for PostgreSQL target. Over to you, Ramya. Thank you, Neil. So one of the coolest features in our latest release is the addition of PostgreSQL on Azure as a target. Though there are a lot of reasons behind this decision, the important one is the simplicity and the similarity between Oracle and PostgreSQL and the easiness it brings to the users in terms of, in terms of the migration process. So we have another uh, capability called code assessment for PG as a target. And this uses a third party tool called aura to pg in the background. And this comes with its own set of prerequisites. So once you have the extension installed, go to the assessment extension settings page, and you'll see two new parameters added. So if you have aura to pg already installed, then well and good. If not, all you have to do is to execute the script from this publicly available GitHub repository. And you'll have all the order to PG and its dependencies such as strawberry pull installed and put in the installation path and the client home path. And with all this done, start with your assessment. So fill in the details, click on the PostgreSQL, go with the code assessment and jump started. So this is going to take a few minutes to hire based on the complexity of your workload and the database sizing. So I already have one. Let me quickly jump to it. So this code compatibility that I was talking is going to give us more details on each different object types present in the workload and is going to aggregate these numbers and going to give you, you know, what are the objects that are ready to migrate to PostgreSQL and which needs the validations, verifications, any reviews, and some of them which has any challenges in the migrations. So if you want to get more into details, there's like two different ways. The first way is to basically click on the red part of the horizontal bar graph. And this is going to give us, you know, group the details in terms of each object and any challenges that are associated with it and the estimated time to fix these issues. So this is one way. While the other way is to click on the not ready card. And here we are going to group the details in terms of the issues. And you'll see the total number of you know, occurrences of these issues and the total number of uh, functions or procedures or packages you know, uh, affected by these issues and the overall time to estimate, estimated to fix this issue at an Oracle instance level. So this tab particularly gives you more details on the objects and the issues associated with it and the overall time needed to fix this, which is 16 days in this case. The next tab is a SKU recommendation. We try to provide the right sizing for the target chosen based on the source properties and the current one 
for the Oracle workload is the bustable Gen 5, 2B cores and 32 GB storage. So the last tab is the feature compatibility tab. This tries to display the total number of features that is usable, that is used in the particular Oracle workload, and its equivalent Azure PostgreSQL features along with the migration effort. So this migration effort basically ranges from zero to five, while zero being not compatible or difficult to migrate, and five being most compatible and very minimal effort required to migrate. So for the 17 features available and used, the 70 is the total score, and that's all about the features and details when you're trying to move from Oracle to PostgreSQL. We're trying to provide uh, more, you know, more details on the assessment, trying to reduce the risk and making it easier than ever to move from Oracle to Azure database. Thank you. Over to you, Neem. Thanks, Ramya. Yeah, so now with this capability now migrating or assessing Oracle to PostgreSQL workload will be much more easier. And you can do end-to-end -end assessment, not only just code, but this right sizing as well as feature assessment. This extension is in public preview right now, and we, we, try, we will try to go GA sometime early next year. Now, moving on to my second and the third demo together. So AWR report in Oracle is automatic workload repository for those who are not familiar. It is used basically sometimes for baselining, sometimes for performance troubleshooting, uh, sometimes for diagnostic and troubleshooting. So what AWR report does is it collects system metadata, which is like CPU consumption, memory consumption, IO throughput, and so on, and gives a holistic kind of report, which covers the, which shows the usage of the system, the, the expensive queries, the network usage, IOs, and various other metrics. Now, a lot of customers and end users, they have AWR reports of their systems. They generate very often during their peak load or during their uh, baseline activities. And it was a great way of using this performance data to suggest a SQL or Postgres target. So this new capability in Azure Data Studio, which we have in the database migration assessment for Oracle, you go ahead and run new assessment. And when you click on run new assessment, you go ahead and provide um, some uh, assessment name. Uh, I'm going to choose SQL in this demo. And then you have two options. One is a connected mode where this particular extension connects to the Oracle and pull the performance data. Or you all, if you already have an AWR report, you can go ahead and select an AWR report. So I'm going to click plus. Um, I'll go to my folder. C drive, AWR, and I have one AWR report here. And then I go ahead and click Start Assessment. Uh, this takes around, uh, assessment takes a, around a few seconds, like it, it goes ahead and collects statistics data, it collects uh, some feature data, performance data, and it combines and blends all this information to produce end-to-end uh, -end workload assessment followed by SKU recommendation. So just, let me hit refresh. It's another 10 or 15 seconds more. While, while this is running though, you've been showing a lot of great technology, but I'm curious, like how much does it cost to run all these assessments? Like, is it something that's expensive? Like, do we need to prepare for that? Like what, what do customers need to know? Yeah, so this this extension is currently available in Azure Data Studio. So anyone who in, goes ahead install Azure Data Studio, uh, which is really easy to download, and then go ahead and download this extension. And when you go ahead and download this extension, this uh, kind of assessment capability, you can go ahead and run it. And we go ahead and run very lightweight uh, Oracle queries. Um, uh, whatever testing we have done, we have seen only two to five percent of the system uh, kind of overhead uh, while mm -hmm. running assessment. So it's it's a pretty lightweight uh, query patterns which we run on the Oracle system. So it's lightweight and, on the system, but it's also free. <laughs> yes, you're right. Okay, got it. Cool. And now, if you see, we have the. Uh, 
uh, report generated, and it it went ahead. It processed the file, um, the HTML file, and generated recommendation. And that's where my third feature comes in. It recommends hyperscale Gen 5 for ATV core 40 GB storage. So we go ahead and recommend hyperscale target from this release onwards. Now, if you want to go more in detail, um, while uh, I'll directly jump to the SKU recommendation tab, it gives you the the target output. It also gives the recommendation like, OK, you need 64 V cores. Uh, and to support 64 V cores, which is uh, the nearest hyperscale is ATV code target. Uh, similarly, for memory and storage and IOPS, we go ahead and ensure whatever we recommend, it satisfies all the key metrics and goes ahead and gives a, a suitable target. In this case, is hyperscale. It can be general purpose or business critical. And along with the SQL DB, we go ahead and give recommendation for SQL managed instance as well as SQL VM. And in, in Postgres, we go ahead and give recommendation for Flex Server as of now. So these are the three features which we launched. Uh, we, uh, we hope this will go ahead and ease your assessment and migration from Oracle to Azure Data. And we give a freedom of choice whether you want to see, you want to go more towards OSS-based database, which is PostgreSQL, or you want to use our more enterprise cloud-ready uh, <clears throat> SQL native using Azure SQL services. So over to you, Anna. Awesome. That is really cool. Y'all have shown me a lot of things in not a lot of time. And it's great to see that the team is investing in making that migration easier from Oracle to not just Azure SQL, but also to Postgres if you choose to go, you know, the open source route. So Ramya, Neil, thanks so much for coming on the show, showing us this new Oracle migration extension, all the updates that came along with it that's free in Azure Data Studio today. Uh, to our viewers, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think about the new extension and the capabilities. And check out the description for links to learn more. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs> <laughs>